Joanna Lumley, how did you first become involved with this issue? Why does it so concern you? I've been working with Compassion World Farming for over 20 years. And so um, I've been made aware all the way along of the way that we treat our farm animals, which is, by and large, pretty shameful. Now here in the European Union, we've managed to get some laws passed, and some of them have been bedded in, and they're actual directives, which all the countries should be complying with. Recently, in 2013, we went out and visited six countries and completely at random visited 45 farms. One farm treated its pigs properly. And by properly, I mean that they had what is called enriched um, cages, which means that they have straw to rootle about in and that the tails were not docked. In every other farm we visited, they were crammed in together, filthy sheds, up to their hocks in excrement, sometimes in pitch darkness, with just mm, concrete on the floor or slats, slurry, nothing for them to do, and all the tails had been docked. Um, a lot with flies around them, but the thing about the docking of the tail, although it's hatefully cruel and it's done without anaesthetic, is that it means if a pig's tail is docked, it shows that they are too tightly stacked and they would be chewing each other's tails out of frustration and boredom. So this is shocking because this is a law that has been in place in the European Union that you've got to give pigs enriched bedding and they mustn't have their tails docked. And yet here it is, it's completely widespread. So we've come here today to, to Brussels to say to the members who turn up today, please will you enforce it in your country. And those findings that uh, Compassion in World Farming have found, mm. what yourself do you make of them, given that you've, you know, you've been photographed in the, in the past <coughs> holding pigs tightly, I you've been, I think you're rather fond of the animals themselves. I love animals in general, which is why I became a vegetarian. Not because I didn't like the taste of meat and fish, um, but because I was very, very shocked to realise how they're, how they're brought to table what it is actually to do with farmed animals. So um, everything I can do to help any particular section, we've been working with pigs, we managed to get sow farrowing crates banned years ago with Sir Richard Body. that was 25 years ago. We managed to get these things in, you can only go little by little with parliaments, but you've got to get a law made. What infuriates me, shocks me, is this, it's a scandal, the way that these laws are being flouted. It is a European Union, Directive, it is a law, and yet everybody flouts it. Why aren't they penalised? And I think it's because people want to make money. I think because the, the public, the paying public who eat meat, don't know how it's brought up because it's always concealed from us. Um, they imagine that parliaments are doing the right things. They might have read that this is now a law and imagine it's being put in place, and it isn't. So today it's really saying, get in there, fix these laws, make them work. I mean, what do you think for, for UK farmers, which uh, presumably are obeying these laws, that it's... Some uh, are. 50% are. 50% aren't. That it's perhaps rather un unfair mm -hmm. on the ones that are meeting all the standards when uh, maybe there are farmers in the UK around Europe that are not. How is it unfair? Well, how is it unfair to bring your animals up properly? I mean, I know that there's a rush for cheap meat. The truth is, if your meat is cheap, you can be certain it's involved cruelty somewhere along the way. So don't just think, wasn't it lucky it was a bargain, or these people do this meat much cheaper. You can be sure that that animal has been deprived in some way in it before it's been brought to table. So be very careful of, of, of cheap food, cheap meat in particular. It shouldn't be cheap. Meat, fish, poultry, these are luxury items and should be eaten sparingly, not every day, by course, and never cheap. You mentioned that you've come out to, to lobby the MEPs, lobby yeah. the EU on this. Do you think that uh, with your support that this argument can be won, given there is already European law on issues uh, like sow stalls already in place? Well, I'm, I just happen to be one of the many thousands of supporters of Compassion World Farming and indeed animal rights groups across Europe. But we have to have our voice heard. And so how do you get your voice heard? You, heard it, you get it heard through democracy and you invest your trust in members of parliament, members of the European Parliament, and you trust them to do what is the law. They are now failing to enforce these laws. So we, as a democratic system, come here quite humbly and modestly and say, will you please enforce these laws? It is actually a scandal, and I don't think people at home should stand by and go, it's up to them, it's up to the farmers, it's up to the members of parliament. Get involved with your supermarket. Ask your butcher where he gets his meat from. Ask your supermarket where they get the meat from. How is it brought up? Insist on visiting your local farms. Try to see these things. Try to do a bit yourself. Don't let somebody else do it. Indifference is the friend of everything that's evil. Indifference.
Just finally, oh, that point on consumers, I wanted to ask you about that because uh, the European Commission has named uh, countries that it's investigating for, for, for certainly not meeting the law. Do you think that people should pick and choose the meat that they buy, the, the, the bacon that they buy, according to the country that it's coming from, uh, to, to pick do. and choose the good ones? I do, but it's terribly difficult as a woman who's busy with three children. What she wants to know is the meat she's buying has been properly brought up. I believe this. 50% of eggs in Britain now are free range. 50%. And that's because of our constant, constant pressure. And now people are completely happy to buy free-range eggs, 50%. The other 50% don't care how they're brought up. But I think to ask a woman to study every packet, some of them very scrappily written and you can't really tell, you can't tell. And then there are slithering things where you bring a, a piggy's bread in one country and brought to fatten it in another country. And that, you know, you manage to get around things this way. So I just know that you should look for free-range that's one of the words you can look for. Um, you know, just do your very, very best to buy the best meat you can. And don't say, we're a poor family, we've got to buy cheap meat. Say, then bless your darling hearts. I know what it was like to be poor. I know that sounds odd. Um, save up and buy the better meat and eat it less often.